If you've been on my previous video or have seen any of my recent artwork, you would know that I have an interest in channel bumpers. And Nickelodeon's bumpers are no exception. All they needed was some fun visuals with a way to implement Nickelodeon's logo, and it's perfect. And boy oh boy did it work out. I love these guys who only exist just to tell you what channel you're on. Put them on my kin list. I wish there were merch of these guys. And what would you know there are? A fair amount of these are Pizza Hut collaborations, huh? There's some paper hat- Goodness gracious, there was a glow-in-the-dark cup. MTV Ghost. I know Joey did some stuff for MTV, but- but even then. <laughs> There's a Nickelodeon Studios- What the heck? I can't afford that! But that's not what you're here for now, is it? Let's go back to the paper hats for a second. Then let's go to their respective bumpers. The Smiling Dinosaurs, and the Big Beast Quintet. What if I told you? that these two had cartoon pilots. I couldn't believe my eyes, I was in for a wonderful time. To me, of course, a bumper turning into a full-on show would go hard. If a movie and show adaptation could work with something like advertisements, with exceptions, I'm sure bumper shows could work just as well. Now, I'm not one to critique things. I like to see the good in everything. Plus, considering these were failed pilots, I'm not one to be harsh. With everything said, let's get the pilot one. Thunder Lizards. Not named after the terrible Thunder Lizards. These are just normal Thunder Lizards. The pile was made in 1990 by the oh-so-talented Joey Album, which you may know for his various Nick Bumbers and works on Sesame Street. The pile consists of the rock and roll band, the Thunder Lizards, Dina, Desi, and Billy. The pile focuses on Billy for the most part. The pilot begins and you can already see the Joey within the art style. It starts off with the stadium and a bit of scenery. We then meet the host of a concert called Dino Fest, Sammy, who's getting a little impatient. What do they have against me? After everything I've done for them, I swear, if they're not here soon, I'll turn them into Thunder Burgers. Suddenly the band shows up, and like any titular cartoon boss-like character, he's a bit of a pain in the rear. Oh, I really feel for you. We also get introduced to the roadie of the Thunder Lizards, Peter. Someone talking about me? Ah, Sammy B, you're too kind. Yuck. He is my kind of guy. If you're wanting someone that has like no care or complaints in the world, Peter is exactly that. Sammy then tells the Thunder Lizards to be prepared on time and for some reason refers to Billy as William. Listening William? Huh? Hey Dina and Desi, keep an eye on that boy. Probably a reference, but I wouldn't know. Billy then wanders off only to find a print ad promoting Mount Fire, which he proceeds to head towards. By this point, you're probably wondering, where are the doo-wop dinos? I'd say this is the closest thing to them. The beautiful brunettes! You can only see them for 7 seconds before transitioning back to Billy doing some tricks and all that stuff. He proceeds to get to the top of Mount Fire only to realize that it's about to erupt. We then transition back to the rest of the band, and my guy Peter reading the number one bestseller, Howl. Dino and Desi can't seem to find Billy, then they hear some news from the radio that Mount Fire is about to erupt. Peter then comes to save the day. Again, he is my kind of guy. Without a complaint, without a care, but always willing to save his people. How could you not like that? But anyway, before Billy gets ran over by a boulder Indiana Jones style, Peter immediately saves him, just in time for their performance at Dino Fest. And to end it all off, we get a nice performance from the Thunder Lizards themselves. Let's rock! Thunder Lizards! Thunder Lizards! And that's Thunder Lizards. An almost six minute short with a simple plot with the kind of cartoon characters you would probably expect from cartoons like this at the time. I like this pilot a lot personally. I especially wish there were quote unquote full versions of the songs. I am not using that AI bull butter. According to what was known as Toon Zone at the time, the pilot failed because while it did have a very Nickelodeon design, audiences didn't find it funny and some jokes were considered too juvenile, or they went over their head, which I find to be a bummer. I doubt this is true, but I like to imagine the Thunder Lizards were named after the trio Dino, Desi, and Billy. It's probably just a coincidence, 
but I thought it was pretty funny. Now what's Joey up to now? Well, he's doing a fair amount of things, actually. He's teaching foreign languages, most notably Korean, and he's still drawing. He's still got that style with him, with a slight pinch of points, arguably. I absolutely love his art style, so massive props. You can clearly tell he has an audience in mind. Anyway, Thunder Lizards is a simple, but sweet pilot with great music, fun characters, fun visuals, and my guy Peter. And now for the other pilot. I've seen at least two videos mention this pilot, but as your channel bumper enthusiast, I've been wanting to talk about this one big time. It's called Big Beast Quintet, or as the retooled version calls it, Channel Zero. Created by Japheth Asher and Georgia Valen, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, the pilot is currently lost, which is a shame, because I think the quintet would go hard in a show, and I had a pretty good time with Thunder Lizards. Now that I mention it, did you know that Big Beast Quintet and Thunder Lizards were two out of eight commissioned pilots for what was at the time called Nicktoons? The eight pilots would air, and the top four that were liked the most would become full-on series. Except no, only three pilots were picked up to become full series, which were Doug, Rugrats, and Ren and Stimpy. But what was Big Beast Quintet like? Channel Zero features the Big Beast Quintet as news reporters for Animatropolis. Their boss, Nero Zero, has a Madden Glad switch on his head, controlled by a little creature called Bombat, and he sends the Quintet to find someone called the Abominably Animated Man, which they failed to do, leading to the Quintet making a fake broadcast. Big Beast is like, No, thank you! and goes on his own to find the guy himself, and he succeeds. And despite the looks, the abominably animated man is a friendly guy. Back to the rest of the quintet, Nero Zero comes back to them upset from the lack of Big Beast and the fake set. Suddenly, Big Beast comes back with none other than, well, the abominably animated man. Nero Zero's switch is put into glad mode, and all's well that ends well. Big Beast Quintet unfortunately had the same problem that Thunder Lizards had. While it had that Nickelodeon feel, it wasn't considered funny enough to the audience. Plus the whole mean boss thing wouldn't have been relatable to children. Mr. Krabs! And the fake set flew by the test audience's heads. But no matter what the test audience thought, no matter if it's good or bad, some things just aren't meant to go lost. And Big Beast Quintet is exactly one of those things to me. Over at Twitter, Javid was asked about the pilot and if he had a copy of it, and he said, I did. The pilot is actually called Channel Zero. It features the Big Beast Quintet. I wrote it, and George directed. I might have a VHS somewhere, but George would be a better bet for a decent copy. It was a very cool short. I bet so. Unfortunately, it's been six years since that tweet was made and still no word. But that doesn't mean we haven't received anything throughout the time. On December 17th of last year, Internet Archive user Kwanzaa uploaded production art of the pilot. Funnily enough, I was introduced to this by someone on DeviantArt who showed me the production art to this pilot. And that's how I got invested in this. You now have a visual idea on how the characters look and all that, but without color. There's a narrator character and I already love them. There's the aforementioned Obamily animated man. I like to imagine how he'd look in the actual pilot. What I personally picture is something like clutch cargo, but without the real mouth placed over a single frame of animation and instead with an animated mouth. Let me try that while picturing how I imagine him sounding. So, how are things? How's the family? My kid went to see a movie the other night and got run over. That's nice. Also, can I just take the time to mention all the other things that have been made for this? I mean, these backgrounds, these vehicles. You could tell they put a lot into this pilot. I'll have a link for the production art in the description. Aside from the production art, nothing new has been revealed about Big Beast Quintet or the retooled Channel Zero. I've seen at least two other videos mentioning both Thunder Lizards and Channel Zero, but I feel they didn't really show much. Which is completely understandable since both were made before the production art. But Big Beast feels guilty about it and... <sighs> I totally get where you were coming from two years ago, but dang! But even then, some things just shouldn't be lost to time. And I could say that for Channel Zero big time. But until then, we shall keep on marching to the beat of our own drum with the hope that this pilot will be revealed soon. I may be weird for this, but I'll always love the idea of taking a character from the media with a very short screen time and trying to make a cartoon out of them. Nick's bumpers definitely feel right for something like this. You could just look at the characters within those 10 second bumpers and think, Yeah, they could work in a cartoon. It's a shame both Thunder Lizards and Big Beast Quintet never won that pilot contest. But it's totally understandable, and while I'm no critic or anything like that, 
I personally didn't have any problem with Thunder Lizards, and with all I've heard about Channel Zero, if it were to be released, I think I would like it. Stuff like the production art and the plot in general got me absolutely invested in this pilot. Talk about such talented people with their work hidden for so long. And that's all I can really say until we get more info about this silly little quintet. Say what you want about these pilots, I personally loved what I got to see, and I can't wait to see more. With everything said, if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more bumper related content or stuff that piques my interest, let me know down below. It might take some time, but that's a-okay. Until we meet again everyone. Bye bye!